Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be introducing the four-stroke cycle and how it works. And we're going to do this by splitting the four-stroke cycle into different steps. Now, a stroke is a movement from top dead center to bottom dead center or bottom dead center to top dead center. And the cycle for a four-stroke cycle includes four strokes or four movements of the piston. So the first movement we're going to analyze, and we could start from anywhere, but we usually start from this one, is the intake stroke. And this is when the piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center and moves with the intake valve open, as you can see on the left side in your diagram with the intake underlined. So a little bit about how it works is the piston is moving down and takes and grabs air from the outside coming from the outside of the engine. And this piston creates a vacuum where the pressure is lower on the inside of the cylinder compared to the outside. The intake valve is open, the exhaust valve is closed, and we have this suction of air coming into our engine. Now, this change in pressure, so the pressure outside of your cylinder is usually higher than the pressure inside, and that causes the air to come into your cylinder. This is due to the fact that fluids always flow from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone. And that's why we have air coming into our engine and filling up the cylinder. So after the intake stroke, what we do is we close the intake valve and we start our compression stroke. Now our compression stroke happens from bottom dead center to top dead center. And both valves are closed. And as the name indicates, the compression stroke is where we compress air inside the chamber. So now we filled the air through the intake stroke and we are ready to compress the air. Now, if we go from bottom dead center, which is a high volume to a lower volume at top dead center, we are essentially decreasing our volume and that causes our pressure and temperature to increase. This can also be verified from the ideal gas law, which is PV equals MRT, where the pressure and temperature have to increase because the volume decreases. And this is in preparation for combustion. So we are preparing our chamber for combustion by compressing the gases and increasing the temperature. The higher the temperature, the easier it is to combust. Now, step three of our four stroke cycle is not a stroke itself, but it's a, a, a single instant in time between two strokes. And that is happens at top dead center, very close to top dead center. And this is when the spark plug fires close to top dead center. And what that does is when you when you fire the spark plug is you actually have combustion occurring. And combustion typically occurs close to top dead center. And the reason we want combustion to occur close to top dead center is we want to be able to push the piston back down. So that's how we create power. We convert our fuel into heat energy, which then converts it into mechanical energy and pushes the piston down. So a little bit more about combustion. It's not an instantaneous process, but it's very, very close to instantaneous uh, in the grand scheme of things. And we can say that it starts before top dead center and ends after top dead center, but it's very, very close in time. So it's a very quick process. Um, so what happens to the gas mix when that happens? So we have a mix of gasoline and air at that point. And what happens is our pressure increases immensely and our temperature increases immensely. So we already had a high pressure and a high temperature from the compression, and now we're bringing that up even more. Now, a little bit about the gas mixture and what happens during combustion. Uh, during combustion, we have a change in uh, chemical composition of our mixture. So we start with air and fuel, and typically this is converted then to carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen, as seen in the equation. Our next step is step four, and this is equivalent to the third stroke of our cycle, and this is often called the power stroke or the expansion stroke. This occurs as a result of combustion and is when our piston moves from top dead center to bottom dead center. And now we have an increase in volume, which means that the pressure and temperature are going down. The main reason for this power stroke is to produce work. This power stroke produces work because we have an extremely high pressure and extremely high temperature, which is being converted to mechanical energy by pushing the piston down. 
and this is how the engine creates power. This stroke is practically the most important stroke out of the four. The other three are really there to prepare this power stroke so that we can actually create some power out of the engine. Now, step five is another instant in time rather than the fourth stroke and is called exhaust blowdown. So before we have our exhaust stroke where we exhaust the air out, we have our exhaust blowdown, which is a part where we immediately open the exhaust. So once we are done with our power stroke, at the bottom of our power stroke, we usually open the exhaust and nearly instantaneously, most of the pressure and temperature that were still high go down. And we have choked flow through our exhaust port. So our exhaust port is open and our exhaust valve is open and we have a very, very high flow rate of air coming out. So we essentially, if we have a pressure that's two or three times the amount of atmosphere, immediately when we open the exhaust, we have a very high speed flow out of the exhaust port. And this helps in reducing the amount of pressure and temperature that we have in our system and allows us to then exhaust our the rest of our exhaust by pushing the piston up. So this is a step that's very important and we need to have that in our analysis so that we understand what's happening. So we have an instantaneous or near instantaneous exhaust and then we go into our exhaust stroke where we take out the rest of our exhaust fumes by pushing the piston up and reducing the volume available in the chamber. So what we do is we essentially push out all of the exhaust by having the piston move up. This is called the exhaust stroke and it goes from bottom dead center to top dead center. And now our intake valve is closed and our exhaust valve is open. So we reach top dead center and once we reach top dead center, our cycle essentially restarts. So if we think about this, our piston is moving up and is moving up all the way up to top dead center. Once we get to top dead center, what we do is we start closing the exhaust valve and start opening the intake valve. So by closing the exhaust valve and opening the intake valve, we are essentially going back to step one, where step one was the intake valve was open while this piston was moving from top dead center to bottom dead center. So that's essentially how we complete the cycle of the four stroke engine. Now in future videos, we'll go a lot more into depth into each of the different steps, one through six, but this is just an overview in general. In the next video, in the same way as this one, we will be introducing the two stroke cycle and trying to understand how the two stroke cycle works. We will also make some comparisons between two stroke and four stroke to really try and understand what is happening and which one is better for which circumstance. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if not, we'll see you in the next video.